What's going on YouTube? The Ish9 here. Wanted to give you guys an update on my use of the Xperia 1 Mach 3. As we enter the advent of the launch of the Sony Xperia 1 Mach 4, I wanted to go over my experience and tell you guys why I think the Sony Xperia 1 Mach 3 is still a great option and why you should still consider buying it in 2022. We are looking at a bunch of devices that are currently coming out very quickly as we enter mid-year towards the end of the year. And I still feel like this phone is a very viable option in 2022 for most smartphone enthusiasts and has a lot to offer that maybe a lot of people will either forget about, forgotten about, or haven't fully explored. So let's go over that. Now, Sony has jam-packed a bunch of features into this device. Um, we have a frosted glass back. I have the purple version. This is the US model, so there is no dual SIM, but if you get the international model, you can get a dual SIM as well as expandable storage. Loving that frosted back and those frosted sides. Um, easy to take out. You don't really need the, um, the pin, um, pin hole there to pull it out. You just kind of put your finger in there and, and slap it out. This is what the device is gonna look like in direct sunlight. If anybody remembers my previous you know video that I did say that there isn't too much of a difference when it comes to um, the screen displays on the front facing displays. Uh, this is at max brightness and at 120 hertz. The previous device was at 90 hertz uh, variable refresh rate. So if you look at those angles, I do have a, a glass screen protector on it, but if you look at those angles, you do get slightly a glare. Um, however, it's not so much that it makes it unusable, at least not to me. I'm able to see it just fine. I have pretty good eyesight and I can pretty much navigate the majority of my applications in direct sunlight uh, quite all right. If anybody knows that AMOLED displays usually have this issue, especially with darker colors and wallpapers and designs and things of that nature, app launchers. Um, however, I do have a brighter display using quite a bit of uh, different colors and white and you know it works very well for me i have no issues with it however there are displays out there that are brighter so with the sony xperia 1 mach 3 you are pretty much getting everything that the previous device gave you pretty much everything the previous device gave you except slight improvements so uh, for someone that has the mach 2 generally speaking most people at the launch of the one mach 3 simply said don't even worry about it but i feel like at this stage in the game definitely worry about it if you're looking to get an update and you're looking for a device that is pretty much the jack of all trades we're talking headphone jack dual front facing speakers 4k oled display fairly good battery life depending on how you manage your battery which is subjective you can get damn near all day battery life um, we're looking at a side mounted fingerprint scanner with the power button in it. They did add a dedicated button for the assistant. Don't really care for that, but then you still have your camera button and whatnot. And you know, if anybody's interested, I did a, the, a, a comparison between this device and the previous device, the 40% increase that they touted. I don't really see it or hear it in my day-to-day -day use, but it wasn't something I was gonna gripe about. The fact that they attempted to put it on there was good enough for me. And the device itself is sweet and definitely an upgrade in terms of battery use. Now, this is definitely a camera phone. It has the Sony Alpha cameras here on the device. And what really makes it fall short to maybe a lot of other cameras on the market is the software. It has great hardware, but the software and the fact that the lenses are a little smaller can sometimes make it fall a little bit short. With the Alpha cameras, you get the adjustments, You get all the adjustments that you can pretty much make here if you go into the manual mode. You can definitely play around with this and try to get the best video or the best shot that you could possibly get. Um, however, 
the fact that it does take some time may be a slight annoyance to some people. Um, as I recorded the opening to this video with that front facing camera, as you can see there in good lighting, you can pretty much make any camera look good. So as long as your lighting is okay with the Sony Xperia, maybe you need to carry around, you know, a small portable uh, luminous light picture or something of that nature. If you intend to take maybe more serious photos that you can take your time with. But for a basic point and shoot camera, I don't think the, the majority of people are going to be able to pick up most cameras in a lineup. If you had this device lined up with some of the top camera devices on the market, the Huawei, the um, Samsung devices, the iPhone devices, the Google Pixel, most people aren't going to be able to pick it up. There's only certain situations where they will be able to. And as long as it takes a fairly good photo, everybody is normally okay with that. Um, however, when your focus is on cameras, you got to be critiqued a little bit more. So. Sony does fall a little bit short there as far as the software simply because they focused a lot more on the hardware of the device and the lenses just aren't big enough to bring in enough light enough details um, for it to be super ultra premium but for my liking for my taste I have gotten used to using Sony cameras so I can pretty much do okay for my own personal taste and liking um, however there are cameras that do better in point and shoot situations and that's just what it is but if you don't mind tinkering a little bit maybe doing some after cleanup um, with your device and doing some some, some editing you're relatively be okay because this device can give you almost any shot that you would want in order to make your edits yeah, so you have 16 millimeter 24 millimeter 70 millimeter and 105 millimeter respectively so you can pretty much bring in as much detail as you want uh, get as wide of a photo as you want and you'll have a, a, a large canvas to work with in your post editing. Now, Sony touted a 40% increase on this device from its predecessor um, as far as front-facing speakers, screen display brightness, and the headphone jack amplification. Um, with my testing, I personally do not experience that. I don't experience that increase in value that they suggested was there. Um, I, I think they're pretty much equal. I do think the panel on this display is a little bit better, a um, little bit better calibration as far as the color accuracy um, with that OLED panel. It's definitely beautiful. 120 hertz display. That's something that most people um, think they need or really want on the device. However, I find it to drain my battery considerably. And on my heavy usage days, I do turn it down to 60 because it doesn't assist me with viewing my content at all. Uh, but there's pretty much little to no difference if you still have that Sony Xperia 1 Mach 2 from this device as far as those three features that they claim they fixed or improved upon. Um, now they're definitely still good. I have zero issues with any of those things. There is a faster charging speed on this device. You're looking at a, um, I would say a, a significant increase when it comes to charging speeds. Um, that's something that I really wanted to improve because there's days where I don't plug in my device at night and I'm rushing to get to work so I plug it in real quick just to get a quick charge up and slow charging on that previous one Mach 2 was a little bit too slow and I wasn't able to get the battery that I needed to make it through the day uh, but they did increase that and they also increased the fast charging speed on the wireless charger those improvements were greatly needed and necessary so if you want a slightly bigger battery if you need faster charging speeds the one Mach 3 definitely give it to you and I think in the current market of smartphones we're some devices are giving you 60 watt, 80 watt, going up to 120 watt, I believe with the Xiaomi devices. 
um, I, I think it's it's greatly overdue that Sony also assists with that. However, with their devices moving so much, I can see how those charging speeds and maybe um, that wireless charging would affect the degradation of the device. So they kind of wanted to maintain the integrity of it. Um, so it, it wasn't too big of an issue. You just have to make sure you, you definitely plug it in for at least an hour and a half so you can get some use out of your device. Um, but with the faster charging speeds, slightly faster charging speeds, it's definitely manageable. When Android 12 hit this device as one of the major of two updates that Sony has promised to provide us, I haven't seen any of the bugs that I see on my Google Pixel or on any of the other devices that may have gotten Android 12 update. Um, that may have been experiencing a couple of different hiccups. This device has not given me not one hiccup throughout my entire usage with it. It has been extremely consistent. Uh, Sony's very good about providing monthly patches. So you can expect to receive those even after you stop receiving updates if you intend to get this device. So we're gonna get Android 13 on this device coming up here. And I expect to receive security patches with this device because they gave them and they're giving it on the previous device. I also have Android 12 on the Sony Xperia 1 Mark 2. Uh, some people are reporting that they're seeing it on some of even the uh, mid-range Sony devices. So that's very, very good of Sony to do that. Um, I think it definitely pulls in for the hardcore Sony enthusiasts and uh, provides some credence to the company and some you know just some confidence in your buying decisions because these devices are not cheap they're competing with every other smartphone out and all the other top brands out and not being able to provide those things you know it just doesn't give people confidence to buy the product i'm not saying that it makes it a worse product i'm not saying that it would perform any less than maybe some other devices but it definitely gives people confidence and it gives them the ability to expect new features. I do have a launcher on my device currently, uh, so you're not going to be able to see it there. You can kind of see the Android 12 features here from the notification page and kind of how it lays it out. So, the fluidness of that 120 hertz display will make people happy um, especially those that kind of like that trend it does take a major major toll on the battery 4k OLED display with 120 hertz man it, it's just heavy heavy tasking on the battery you know even before you even do anything then you got that always on display also you know you you, you have your device off the off the charger even overnight you know you might see about eight to nine percent battery drop of it just sitting there doing almost nothing uh, just because of that always on display you got the notification light that comes up there um, great great features love all those features miss some of those features on some devices um, but it's heavy on the battery and there's kind of nothing you can do about it it's just one of those things you deal with and when you want to get full functionality out of your device out of your purchase you know it's, it's not a problem, um, especially if they have such a big battery on there. You can go through and you can do some task management and just try to maybe cut off that 120 hertz if you are really, really big on battery. But I get roughly all day with this device, so it hasn't been too big of an issue for me. Now, I do feel it prudent to go over some limitations and it's pretty much set everyone's expectations for what it is they should expect if they do buy a Sony Xperia device. So, all in all, in my conclusion, this is one of the most well-rounded devices that you're gonna be able to get now currently on the market in flagship terms. Um, all the other devices, to me, they kinda fall short in terms of features. Phones like the Sony Xperia 1 Mach 3 are 
some of the things that got me into smartphone technology to begin with because they kind of included everything in one package you had your your music player you had your 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 content your movie watching movie watching device you can take pictures on it that are fairly solid and it just does pretty much everything you needed to do some other devices have gotten rid of those features for maybe increases in some other areas and this is the reason why i kind of call this device the jack of all trades but at the same time it does fall short it doesn't have the brightest display on the market it doesn't have the loudest front-facing speakers on the market it doesn't have maybe some of the best cameras on the market but what it does has is everything else included in one package and that's kind of why I would say you should get a Sony Xperia if you're looking for that if you want everything in one you get a Sony Xperia device premium hardware premium software little to no issues everything you could possibly want in a media watching device in a music player um, charging speeds are pretty good battery life is pretty good 4k OLED 120 Hertz display it's giving you everything they gave you the total package now if you want perhaps the brightest display on the market or perhaps the loudest speakers on the market you're not gonna get it in the Sony Xperia device they just don't it just doesn't do it um, but as far as I'm concerned it competes with every other premium device on the market but it's just it's in the world of its own man it's in a class of its own Sony does their own thing no worries if maybe perhaps people go a different direction, but this is what the Sony Xperia has to offer. Thanks for watching.